Hi everyone, I'm the Limitless Librarian and after being on this platform for three and a half months, I'm finally getting around to doing the booktube newbie tag. Hashtag fashionably late. Normally this is the first video that a new booktuber does, but for some reason I just didn't do that. Analysis paralysis is a thing that I suffer from um, just overthinking things and just getting stuck, I guess, through overthinking things. So I guess that's kind of a big part of why it took me a while to get to this. Um, it's, it's definitely been on my mind as a thing that I should do. Last month I did have a bunch of videos that I wanted to get done in that month, so that was also a reason why it didn't get done last month. Anyway, let's stop procrastinating and get on with the show. So basically there are about 10 prompts that you answer about booktube and why you're here and what you do basically. So I've got my iPhone here with all the prompts, so let's get into it. So prompt number one is why did you start this channel? And I guess the main thing is that I wanted to just create something that was like a, a body of work that uh, I could make and have it and be like, yeah, I, I made this. This is a thing that I did. I guess I also just wanted to learn some more skills like editing, talking on camera, planning videos. And I guess just see what I could do. You know, test, test the limits. Right? I mean, that's part of why this channel is called The Limitless Librarian. And books are something that I, you know, I read books just a lot normally anyway. So it makes sense that would be a thing that I could do with my time and resources and skills um, that I have. So prompt number two is what are some fun and unique things that you can bring to booktube? And um, some of those things are, for example, my themed recommendations. I don't think I've ever seen another booktuber do something quite like that, recommending books for a specific uh, theme. Like, like people do stuff like seasonal TBRs or like best steampunk books, best zombie books, whatever. But this is like recommending based on a favourite character from a specific game, for example. And yeah, I just, I just don't think... Like, the first one I did, the first video on Booktube, in fact, um, since I officially became the Limitless Librarian, was my Hunger Games book recommendations for each district. And I looked up, uh, I did a search to see if anybody had done that. And I was really surprised to find that it didn't seem that anybody had done that before. Um, another thing that I bring to Booktube is the perspective of me being uh, a visually impaired bookworm. And though um, I mostly read books through the typical means of just standard print books, um, just, I guess, bringing that perspective to things potentially, discussing things from that perspective, it's not something that I've done much yet, but I guess other visually impaired and perhaps disabled um, viewers in general, it might be nice to uh, have a creator that um, you can perhaps relate to in that way. And just maybe see, you know, I'm doing all these things, I'm able to do all these things, in spite of my circumstances, for example. Prop number three is, what are you most excited about for the channel? And um, I'm not really sure, I'm not sure what I was particularly. Uh, excited about, I guess, just trying new things um, on it. Seeing what I could do, uh, what kind of videos I could make, if and see if anybody would like them, which it turns out they do. Um, so yeah, and since being here I've also found um, how much I've enjoyed being part of the booktube community, like on Discord for example, and also just interacting with people on my comments and my community tab, and I didn't didn't know how far that was going to go, um, but yeah, so it certainly surprised me, I guess. Number four is, why do you love reading? And to be honest, I don't really know. I just 
do. It's it's thing I've I've loved reading for years, and um, yeah, I, I don't really know. Like I mean, it's I love reading even when I was little, really. If you see my channel banner, uh, the quote "She reads everything, everyone who ever knew me," that's accurate. That happened when I was little. Uh, my parents would tell people, you know, she likes reading, and they would ask, "What does she read?" and they would be like everything she reads everything so I don't really know what got me started on it number five what book or series got you into reading again not really sure because from when I was little I liked reading but I know what book really did it I guess when it came to like really really getting into it and that was City of Bones by Cassandra Clare there's uh, like I was reading books and buying books before then, but I guess that's when my reading got more serious and constant. My nana was always telling the story of when she was um, out with me shopping when I picked that up. So I was out at the shopping centre with my nana. Um, I was, this would have been first year of high school, so it would have been 13 or 14. And we're at Big W, which is a, like a big shop that just sells everything. Um, and we went to the book aisle because that's where I usually went. I was there with my pocket money, and the book section, the, the book aisle, um, was divided into two sides. On one side were the younger novels, the sort of middle grade ones, like um, Captain Underpants, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, um, Rainbow Fairies, all those. And then across the aisle. There was why there was the YA section, so Hunger Games, Divergent, Mortal Instruments, all those kind of things. And so up until that point, when I went shop book shopping with my nana at Big W, uh, I mainly stuck to the kiddie side of that book aisle. And so that particular day, I went there. I grabbed a Diary of Wimpy Kid book. And then, uh, I guess out of curiosity, just to see what was on the other side, I crossed the floor to the other side. And my nana was always uh, saying she wanted to, t she, part of her wanted to tell me those, those are the grown up books, the, you know, that that's the wrong section, there's nothing, there aren't any more kitty books, there aren't any more of your books over there. But she didn't. She kept quiet because she just wanted to see what would happen. Part of her was curious to see what would happen when I crossed the floor and saw what was there. Would I go back? Or would I find something? Or what would I pick up? And it turned out I grabbed City of Bones by Cassandra Clare, which was the first Mortal Instruments book. And I guess that was the first real YA book um, that I picked up. And... That was, you know, me going more on that YA side of the Big W book section and uh, consistently staying there. And so, yeah, she was always telling this story about, about that one fateful day, the first day she saw me cross the floor from the kiddie books to the more mature teen books. And the fact that part of her was wanting to say something but she didn't because the other part of her was also just curious about what would happen. So, yeah, I guess, there you go. The book that got me into more serious reading was The City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. Number six is what questions would you want to ask your favourite booktubers? And honestly, I'm not really sure. I've asked questions in um, Criminoli and Reading Lifts Life's Discords, but they're more like advice type questions like I don't know what I really ask people I'm not the most social butterfly in the world so I don't know number seven is what challenges um, associated with starting a booktube channel do you think will be the most difficult to overcome and uh, obviously those are going to be more things related to my disability but in now I've kind of figured out some workarounds um, like for example Due to my extreme short-sightedness, I can't really tell how I look on the iPad screen as I'm filming. 
even though there's less than a meter between me and the iPad. So I can't really see how I look on film until the video is done and I can hold the iPad screen up close to me to see how it turned out. Um, so I can't really tell if the angle is good, if everything's in frame or if there's something out of frame or if the lighting's dodgy um, until after the fact. And um, so if you've seen that Hunger Games District video, you'll notice that as I went through the books, they started sort of piling up in front of the camera. And it took me a while to realise that that was the case because that was before I got LumaFusion to edit my videos. Um, I couldn't really do anything about that. I couldn't really just redo that bit and then keep the bit of the take that was after that. I had to do it all in one take. And obviously I didn't really want to redo the whole video because of that mess because of that mistake so I just chucked it up on YouTube and resolved to just well learn from that mistake not not make that mistake again another challenge that is also related to that is scripting and reading off of a script because if I wanted to do something more um, serious and plan like say a, like a video essay or analysis type thing then that's the sort of thing you'd want to script and uh, unless I wanted to memorize somehow you know half an hour's worth of talking of script then I would need to have a script to read off of and obviously I got my uh, notebook here from studying but that would look sort of something like this you would be watching me reading like this and probably actually more like this um, having to read my script off of whatever like that or more likely off of my iPhone so you would see me just talking to my iPhone for half an hour aside from whatever pictures or whatever I might want to include in the video so it probably would look very good it wouldn't look very professional um, yeah, I, I just wouldn't be happy with that. So if I ever do do a video like that, it would be screen capture of like a slideshow of just pictures and writing and you wouldn't see my face in it. Luckily, BookTube isn't the sort of thing that you need to script a video regularly because you just got the books and it's just your opinions of them. So you know already how you think about the books, how you feel about them. But even so, there are always still things that I forget to say that I wanted to bring up in the video. And I was like, oh man, I whoops, forgot to talk about that, forgot to mention that. That was a big part of how I felt about this book and I missed it out. Whoops. So yeah, I guess those are the main challenges for me. Prop number eight is when did you start reading? And I touched on that before. Again, it's a thing I did ever since I was little. My mum taught me to read even before I started school. Um, apparently that really surprised my teacher because I was the only one in the class that had been able to read before uh, arriving at school. Um, so there you go. But yeah, my reading in earnest, I guess, really started um, more when I was like maybe 10 or uh, so like 11 or 12 and um, when I was 10 years old I had a, a cornea transplant um, eye surgery that I needed because I was and I was my vision was kind of failing then um, and I was struggling to read books for a period then and so after I had the surgery and then I realized I could read the books now that I had been struggling with for the last couple of years as my vision was going um, yeah I guess it just kind of uh, exploded there um, when it came to yeah just my reading just maybe part of me was like I should read up as many books as I can just in case you know my vision goes again I should make the most of whatever time I have with stable vision I don't know but it's been you know 14 years 14 and a half years now since that and it's been stable so let's let's hope that it remains stable for a long time yet Number nine is where do you read and uh, the most common place I read is on my couch over there uh, with my big cuddly blanket there's a big cuddly fleecy blue dark blue blanket there that I named Cuddles McGee let's see if I can get it into the camera frame <laughs> I 
There we go. There is my couch where I read uh, under Cuddles McGee. Even on a hot day with the air conditioner on, um, even if I don't get under it, I still can't chuck it off. It's just very nice and cuddly to sort of have there, even if you're not under it. So there you go. And there's a green block next to it to keep all my currently reading books, current reads on. And last prompt, number 10, is what kind of books do you like to read? And um, my main genres are sci-fi, urban fantasy, and historical fiction. But there is certainly a lot of room for other ones. Another part of why I'm called the Limitless Librarian is because, as my parents were often telling people, I read everything. There are like mystery books like the Thursday Murder Club that I read. There's horror like Stephen King. There's a more high fantasy like Song of Ice and Fire and Sarah J Maas. There's a bit of romance like Heartstopper. Um, thrillers like Vince Flynn's Mitch Rapp books. There's, I, like I read pretty much anything and everything. Like, I definitely have preferences, but I'm not rigid about sticking within those preferences. A lot of um, booktube advice videos I watched at the start said you kind of need a niche, but that's kind of a problem for me because I don't really have a niche. Like even though I have my preferred genres, I don't read exclusively enough within those genres for it to be enough for me to make that a niche. And I don't want to force myself to restrict my reading to a, a niche for the sake of having content for my channel because then it's going to make reading less fun, it's going to be a chore or it's, it's going to, I'm going to have all these other books that I want to read but I have to uh, pace myself and spread them out because otherwise I'm not going to have anything relevant to post on my channel. I don't want to deal with that so I'm just like, bother that. I read everything. I am the limitless librarian in more ways than one. And that is that is me. That is my brand. My niche is I am limitless. That's the theme. My theme is I am limitless. That's that is my my theme. So th there you go. And it's, it seems to have worked out fine enough for me. So there you go. That was all of the prompts on the booktube newbie tag. Um... So if you're a booktuber and you haven't done the tag yet, uh, maybe do it and don't be like me and let your analysis paralysis cause you to put it off. Um, a lot of new booktubers I know get a lot of their early traffic from it. So I guess I kind of maybe shot myself in the foot with that. Although my first video did do rather well because it was timed with the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes movie that being the Hunger Games District theme recommendations video. So, I guess I didn't do too badly there, but yeah, definitely do the booktube newbie tag if you haven't. You know, throw off the analysis paralysis. Um, it's definitely something that I have to work on just in general in life. So, thanks for watching. If you like that, please like and subscribe. If my booktube newbie tag um, told you a bit about my channel and that sounded interesting. Please subscribe. And with that out of the way, thanks for watching. Do lots of maths, read lots of books, and I'm sure you'll have an awesome day.